Hello everyone, welcome back. Oh, my microphone's down there, sorry. All right, let's try it again. Hey everyone, welcome back, or welcome. Um, this is a request. The Femity, the Femity, the Femi Capitalist Right to Work. It's a rare, we had a really bad storm blow through and the power got knocked out for nine hours yesterday. And it was warm and uncomfortable in the house. Um, but it kicked on last night just as I was going to go to bed. So, a little bit of an easy day today. So I'm picking up a bunch of videos. Holiday weekend, I'm, I know for sure. Uh, we got Memorial Day weekend coming up. So I have Monday off. It's Wednesday now. So I have a couple decent days. and um, So I'll be able to relax. I'm making a turkey. There you go. I'm making a turkey. Okay, so that's just my update. How are you doing? Ah, before we get started, there's a thanks button on the channel. It's just a reflection. I put lotion on, so I'm. it's reflecting. Uh, there's a thanks button on the channel. You can donate. You don't have to. Subscribe if you'd like to, and click the bell. That helps me. So let's get to this video. But what about the fact that women want to work? I mean, they should have the right, don't you think? Most women want to have a career. Well, I don't believe that's true. I don't believe that for a second. You're telling me what you've been told and what you've been told to believe, not what you actually believe and not what's actually the case. No, I don't believe for a second that most women want to work and most women want to have... A lot of women say they want to work because they want to be independent, don't need a man, blah, blah, blah. And then they get out to that workforce. Woo! What do you mean I got to work 40 hours? Not all of them. Some of them. Hey, I work with some that they put in 40, 45. And they have kids, you know, but yeah. I mean, who wouldn't want to just stay home and collect a paycheck? Honestly, I'll do that. You want me to stay home and play video games? Okay, you got it. You got it. If I was, if I had a bigger channel to where I, I did a reaction and then I went out and went out and uh, toured places, you know, and, and made historical videos to where I could just do maybe three videos a week. That'd be the life. Are you kidding me? One channel where I would do reaction videos, you know, a couple of, uh, I don't know, five, ten a week. That'd be hard though. I probably don't know if I'd be able to keep up with that if I also had another channel where I was recording uh, historical videos and stuff like that. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. You know, I, I wouldn't have to put up 50 plus hours a week plus coming here and doing all my videos now and it takes about 14 hours. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of time. It's like... Uh, basically give me one day a week yeah but yeah who wouldn't want that a career that's PR that's propaganda I mean you can't say honestly that you think that most women want to work and also say that uh, women have equal intelligence as men because if they have equal intelligence as men what intelligent person would choose to work if they had a choice not to I know a man wouldn't if given the choice no, I know that most women don't want to work. I don't need to see the statistics. I know that most women don't want to work because I work. So I know what it's like. No, you can only convince a woman or anyone else uh, that it's wonderful. It's just so fulfilling to dress up in business clothes and go to an office all day if they've never worked. You can maybe sell that message to young, inexperienced people, but anyone who has been in the workforce for any length of time uh, will tell you it is not exactly living the dream but you know who is living the dream you know who really is living the companies in the dream married women in Dubai married women <laughs> I was thinking the companies that are profiting off of you but yeah I see where he's going in Saudi Arabia and not just because they get to go on shopping sprees with their husbands you know gold credit cards but because due to the fact that they have so much support from their family so much support from their husbands so much support from their fathers so much support from what you would call patriarchy you probably didn't know that women in the uae and women in saudi arabia 
own a higher percentage of small and medium-sized businesses than women in America by at least 10%. That's ownership. That's entrepreneurship, not employeeship. But of course, they're oppressed, right? Now, most people don't want to work. Now, obviously, there are exceptions. And there are people who can, you know, genuinely derive a lot of satisfaction from their work. Uh, but we all know that they could find infinite other ways to achieve that and better than that uh, level of satisfaction if they weren't. I would, I would get a level of satisfaction if my job were doing YouTube, not reaction stuff, but doing YouTube where I was, I was going to Mount Vernon, I was going to the Hermitage, I was going to Monticello, I was going to, um, Mount Pelier, I was going to all these other, Abraham Lincoln's home. I was doing all these places and making content, talking to people, walking through and, and you getting to experience it. That would be the dream for me because I love historical stuff. I, I love presidents. I love American history. That would be my dream to be able to do that, put it out like the history underground, like, um, vlogging through history stuff like that that would be a great thing for me i would love that that that's just not it, it would be very difficult for me to do that and if i what i'm doing now i'm building a, a subscriber uh, number but if i were to make that change so many of you would fall off and i would have to start from scratch and it's something that I've considered, that I've thought about, because I don't know how long I, you know, I'm not saying I'm going to end this, but I don't know how long this type of thing will happen, because this is this is a lot, you know, 50 hour work week, and then you come home and you do this, and it, it does, it takes a lot, it wears on you, it's fun, but it does build up on you. Um. So yeah, that would that would be the dream for me. But even then, there will be times when it's like. I just don't want to go anywhere this week. I just want to stay home and just relax, you know? So, yeah, it would be a trade-off. It's not about me, Wage slaves and had control of their time. Should women have the right to work? You, you understand what incredibly deceptive language that is? In your, in your society, do they have the right not to work? That's a better question. I mean, look at how they manipulate language around this issue. Instead of just saying you have to work they say uh that you have a career or you have a job as if it's something that you've gained as if it's something you know something that you have rather than talking about all the things that you lose by having that all of the things that you have to let go in order to keep hold of that job they say you have a career but what they mean is your employer has you and that's where you spend most of your time that's where you spend you know most of your waking hours eight, nine, ten hours a day, plus however long it takes you to commute. So maybe up to around uh, half of a 24-hour day, you are either going to work, at work, or coming home from work. And then you get, if you're lucky, maybe four to five hours a day off, you know, four to five hours a day left of free time. Look at that phrase, free time. Because, yes, in, in your uh, free, democratic, uh, liberated independent country most citizens only get about four to five hours a day of freedom because the rest of the time you're at work and work is extremely not democratic not free and you have no independence you know you do what you're told you wear what you're told you eat when they let you your time is not your own in some places you even have to ask permission to use the restroom so most of your waking hours are actually spent in a thoroughly totalitarian environment in the land of the free and the home of the brave. And you get maybe four to five hours a day of uh, freedom. And you're telling me that women want that? No. The system wants that for women. And it has made it largely unavoidable because the cost of living is too high. Or anyway, the cost of... Uh, supporting the lifestyle and maintaining the lifestyle that your society teaches you that you must have if you are to be regarded as a uh, worthwhile and successful human being. They made it necessary for women to work. 
and human beings have a great capacity to convince themselves that they are actually in favor of things that have been imposed upon them. So they tell themselves uh, that they actually want the thing that they have no choice but to accept. Then of course on top of that you have all this propaganda about how wonderful and how fulfilling it is uh, to sell your time and your labor to an employer, to rent yourself out to your employer. And you have people, excuse me, but like yourself, spreading the propaganda. It's no different really from, you know, how you have women in human trafficking networks, women who procure women for the traffickers. It's just, it's basically the same thing. It's just different in the severity of the consequences, but both types of people are lying and making false promises uh, about the servitude and drudgery that they are actually dragging women into on the, on the basis of, you know, promises of how wonderful it's going to be and how much they deserve all of the great things uh, that are going to come to you if you if you listen to me and do what I said. And the trade-off is, if you work hard, you can buy a house, you can get a car, you can do all these things. You don't need anyone to support you. You don't need this. You don't need that. Well, if you're a woman and you join into that workforce at 22 with a drive, a drive of, I want, I want, I want. You know, you want to work hard. You want to earn a living. You want to get this. You want to get that. That's fine. But understand your trade-off by working through your 20s and maybe establishing yourself when you're 30 years old and saying, okay, I got this. Now you're looking around. Now you're ready to have that family. But everything about you is not feminine because you have that drive you have hard work you have uh you've built up because you're you're independent you know you have your own money you're this you're that everything about you is not appealing to a man a man wants a woman who's soft he wants a woman who's very feminine you have an independent streak to where you're basically saying i don't need you but I'm allowing you. Well, I don't want that. Who, who wants it? If I said to a woman, listen, I don't need anything about you. I don't want you. I don't need you. But I'm going to allow you to hang around me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that attracts them. Ooh. Ladies, please. I know you're fighting yourselves right now after you heard that. There's nothing appealing about that. No one wants to hear that. So, the trade-off is that the women have worked in their 20s, which is prime... I hate to say it this way, baby making time. That's a time when you should, you could be getting married, you could be getting, having kids. But once you hit your 30s, after you, uh, a woman peaks like, I think it's 18 is when she enters her peak and she leaves, I want to say it's 27. But when you're 30 and you've, all you've done is just had this drive, you have eight, 10 years, maybe even 12 years of a masculine feel and you're not going to be able to kick out of that you're not going to be able to just turn that off like that and attract a man because everything that you think everything that you've become to be a, a, a woman man in the workforce you think that's attractive to men and it is absolutely not no so you're gonna now have a problem trying to find that man. And then your biological clock is gonna kick in and you're gonna start feeling like, oh my goodness, I wanna have a baby, I want this. All these things now that you pushed, now you hurry up and want, you didn't want them then. But now you want them now, you want, how do I get this going, how do I get this going? And it's, and you were lied to this entire time to believe that once you, you get everything that you want, well, what does everyone kind of want in the end? And I'm hitting that point. You want marriage, you want kids. Yeah, it's, you know, it's sinking into me. Will it ever happen? I don't know. But there's a part of me where it's kind of like, hmm. 
And if I don't ever get any of that, it was a choice I made. I can't be mad at that. I can't be mad at anyone else's decision I made. But if it happens, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But that's the life of a guy. No one cares. You take your lumps, you move on. But for the woman, it's your appeal. I'm a guy, right? My ability to make children, I, I go into the 70s. For a woman, I mean, I think it's like th after 33, it can be considered a geriatric pregnancy to where you can actually, you could have a something wrong with the child. You could have complications that could affect your life. You have a very finite time of, of having a child safely. Men don't. So, the feminist thing really has hurt. And I see a lot of women now who are getting mad at the guys. And it's like, don't, I, I don't know why you're mad at us. We didn't lead you down this path. Other women did. Other women fought for this. It's not all, And not all women follow that line. Not all women do. But the ones who do, I see a lot of women in their 30s. There are women I went to school with that I saw them hit their 30s and they hit panic mode. And they were like, what are you doing? I'm just like, not interested. See ya. When actually you're just going to become a wage slave. Just like in a human trafficking thing, you're going to become an actual slave. And it's really interesting to me because I, I, saw, I just saw a video by a, a, a Muslim sister where she was comparing... You know, the ticket sales for the Barbie movie with the ticket sales for the Oppenheimer movie and what that indicates. It's not so much a story as a uh, cinematic uh, representation of a brain scan of a radical feminist, the way, the delusional way that they see the world. Whereas Oppenheimer is about a physicist, you know, the splitting of the atom and the creation of the atom bomb. Women are going to see that one. The, the sales for Barbie are eclipsing the sales for Oppenheimer. So that means women aren't going to see Oppenheimer, but women are going to see uh, Barbie. Men aren't going to see Barbie. So women would... I went and saw Oppenheimer. ...rather watch a movie, spend money to watch a movie, telling them that they can be and do anything. They're more interested in being told how much they can achieve than they are interested in achieving it. You can't even get them to watch a movie uh, about physics. How are you going to get them to study it? They'd rather watch Barbie. Damn, that was good. How, they won't even watch a movie about physics. How can you get them to study it? Damn. Oof. Obviously, that's a huge generalization. What it shows is the appeal of the propaganda. The appeal of the propaganda uh, has far more appeal than what the propaganda is promising. The propaganda is promising that you can do and be anything. But women aren't as much interested in doing and being anything as they are interested in being told that they can. And that's not really saying anything. It's the same for everybody. I mean, if you could actually remove from the workforce everyone who does not genuinely find fulfillment and satisfaction from their job, you would have extremely few workers left of either sex. Men find fulfillment usually not from the work itself. Most of the time it's not from the work itself, but it's from the fact that they are uh, successfully providing for their families and there's there's also something about working do I love what I do no I like it. it's fun I like it do I love it absolutely not and I never would but I love the people I work with they make it to where you want to come into work and it's a very team we all work together we all have a goal you know even though the company is the one who sets the goal and we're all trying to achieve it and we work hard but working with all these other people that you get along with you want to work with them you want to achieve you want to do this because you, you like it and the camaraderie of everybody busting each other's balls in the morning just having fun and you work together you have fun texting at night just say hey what's going on like if I didn't have that I wouldn't stay 
And look, management was good to me. When my dad died, I took three days off bereavement for the rest of the week. I took another three days off the next week. And my manager, my, I'm sorry, my, my, my boss, um, I said, what should I do? For, should I vacation these days out? And he said, absolutely not. There's no vacation there. How the hell do you, would you deem that a vacation? Was it fun? And I was like, uh, no. And he goes, I'm going to pay you out of pocket. So he paid me three days out of pocket. And he paid me more for those three days than I would have made working. That's a nice dude. That's very cool. And yeah, you know, it's stuff like that that makes you want to work with good people. So they sell their souls to the company store, as the old song says, uh, for the sake of their loved ones. And they find some level of gratification from that, and it gives them a sense of purpose, even doing the most, you know, mundane, difficult, and tedious work. And there's honor in that because it, it involves a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice that you do for your family. But no, most women don't want to work because of course they don't. Most people don't want to work. So, I mean, think it through. There are exceptions, but exceptions notwithstanding, most people don't want to work, but you have to be propagandized into it. This is propaganda. It's just like when uh, Edward Bernays, the father of modern PR, uh, got women to start smoking cigarettes for his customer, for his client by connecting the smoking of cigarettes with women's lib. Just as that was unhealthy for women, this is unhealthy for women. Just as that was for the sake of someone else's profits, so is this. It's just propaganda. Like in the 1950s, when they used to say nine out of 10 doctors recommend um, cool cigarettes, unfiltered, because they have the smoothest taste. And it's just like, yeah, I'd like to know how many actual doctors recommended you you smoked tobacco without a filter. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure 9 out of 10 doctors really did think that that was a good alternative to relieving stress. Look, women have always worked, including Muslim women. And no, I wasn't alive in the 50s. Okay, these are just commercials that they used to talk about and I, I promise I wasn't a, I'm not 74 years old I promise they either did it because of necessity or they did it because they wanted to and that's fine but they never did it because they were fed constant propaganda that they must work in order to be whole and fulfilled human beings they never worked because they were because it was because work was deceitfully portrayed as how you advance some noble cause of gender equality they never worked because the society told them that if they didn't, they were useless. And they're not being told that. That propaganda isn't being spread by anyone except by the, by the profiteers of their labor. So, of course, they will tell them that. They want the market to have uh, vastly more workers than there are jobs, obviously. That diminishes workers' leverage and increases employers' leverage. It's probably the only reason that they're trying to adultify children now. You know, these days, how they're sort of wanting to, like lower the age of consent and so on so that they can eventually get rid of child labor laws i mean they want to push retirement age back as far as possible so they probably want to eventually lower the legal working age as well at some point i mean look at joe biden the man should be in a care home but they want as many people in the workforce as possible for as long as possible but don't at least tell yourself that this is good for you and you want it just because it's what business wants for you when women go to the workplace, they're not breaking down barriers. They are erecting barriers around themselves. And men know that because we've been in those barriers all our lives. We know what it's like to be in the workplace. We know that all of this propaganda is propaganda. It's not a wonderful thing to go out into the workforce. Women have, the domestic life of women traditionally has been a socialist utopia. Why would you leave that? Most people don't want to work. That's a fact. I've done his videos before and know that when it ends, <clears throat> it's just over. And I wanted to check and I saw 1051 of 1052 and I was like, <gasps> good timing, Chris. <laughs> 
that was a good video. I I am hit or miss on some of the things that he does, but we agree completely on this one. Yeah. I think women should be in the workforce. Let the men stay home. Women plumbers, women fixing the electrical grid, women getting it. I mean, some do, but I think it should be, you know, it's like 90% this, 98% that. I think we should flip it. Stay-at-home dads. Play some video games. That's what we should be doing. <laughs> okay, I'm going to end this here. Um, but until next time, have a good day, have a good night.